Cock that rifle. Cut him down. You both heard me. Cut him down. Take that knife and cut him down. What concern is it of yours what I do with this slave? He's not a slave, mister. He's a freed man. I gave him his papers. You must be mistaken, monsieur. This man is the property of the Latine Company. He'll be sold at auction Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. He's the property of no company. He was stolen from my plantation. A field hand of mine saw him dragged aboard a riverboat, and I trailed him here. Don't no bother about me, Mr. Jim. He's a bad man. Who's in charge around here? Who owns the Lantine Company? The rifle's cocked now, Mr. Boy. Don't give him any reason to whip you, Joseph. I'll be back. I'll get you out of here. There are five welts on his back right now. For everyone over five, when I return for him, I'll cut a groove in your back with it. You're the law. I'm I auctioning these slaves off in sanity. But I wouldn't go around accusing people of slave stealing, Mr. Boy, unless you have evidence. I can prove everything I said. Then do it. Unless you can produce papers, the police can't do anything for you. Good night, sir. There isn't time to get the Good papers. Night, sir. Mr. Boyd, how long did you introduce myself? I'm Jacques Toulouse, He's of the Louisiana Courier newspaper. Howdy. You'll pardon my eavesdropping. But when I heard that you were, in fact, a great Jim Boy, I decided I must have an interview with you. I'm sorry, monsieur, but I'm in a hurry. A friend of mine's in trouble. Yes, yes, I heard. Something about freeing a man named Joseph, a former slave. If the monsieur will permit me to buy him a glass of wine, I may be able to help him. This way, monsieur boy. You've stumbled into something that even police pretend doesn't exist. Tell me, who made your first knife, Mr. Boy? Why? What are they afraid of? Ever hear of Jean Lafitte? The pirate? Please, Mr. Boy, not so loud. This pirate has become one of our most honored, if not respected, citizens since he helped General Jackson drive the British from the Veritarian Islands. It has now become the custom, as well as the manner of discretion, so to speak, to look the other way when Pirate Lafitte turns his hand to slave trading. It's a large business in New Orleans, my friend, a very large business. And the men who run it will brook no interference. Not even from the law? Tell me, why did you uh, sharpen both sides of the blade near the end? Where will I find Lafitte? He lives on Galveston Island. But he has a business partner, a Monsieur Pierre Jovin, who lives here, and who is just as dangerous. Where will I find him? I'll give you his address in return for the story of the knife. Agreed. 
24 Rue Sablon in the Vieux Carré. 24 Rue Sablon. Much obliged, Mr. Toulouse, for the wine. What about the story of the knife? Meet me later at the Twin Oaks Inn. But, monsieur, suppose you don't come out alive. Well, then, Mr. Toulouse, you'll just have to write my obituary. It'll make a much shorter story. Good evening. I've come to see Mr. Pierre Jouvin. Monsieur Jouvin is occupied with guests. It'll only take a minute. I'm sorry. He does not wish to be disturbed. Martin, my dear, there is something I wish to tell you uh, privately. Excuse me. My name is Jim Bowie. I'm looking for Mr. Pierre Jouvin. Is he here? I am sorry, monsieur. It's the one I turned away from the door. Will you be so good to follow me, monsieur? I'm not leaving till I see Mr. Jouvin. I am Pierre Jouvin. Now, what brings you to my courtyard like a man from another planet? <laughs> I come to see you, sir, about a Negro you're holding in a warehouse on Water Street. His name's Joseph. Joseph Samuel Thomas. Names mean nothing to me. Where'd you get him? Through customary channels, I suppose. If we have him, our papers should show where we got him. Forged papers, Mr. Jouvin. Joseph is a freed man. I ought to know. He belonged to me and I freed him. And are you prepared to prove this, monsieur? Yes, sir, I am. The papers are in the courthouse at Opelousa. <gasps> then get them, my friend, before you break into a man's house and make rash charges. There isn't time to get him. Your men are auctioning him off Saturday. You'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> The word of an American. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the word of an American? Maybe you've all forgotten that Louisiana is America now. A regrettable occurrence, monsieur. When we French choose to forget. Now, will you go, please? My guests are not amused by this unpleasant interruption. I didn't come here to amuse anybody. I came here to ask you to release this man. Jacques, show him out, please. Is that your final answer? It is. Then this is mine. Thank you, Jacques. It's time someone showed this pig a few manners. Get the swords. You want to fight, mister? Knife's good enough for me. The swords, monsieur. Where I come from, man fights with whatever weapon comes to hand. Take your choice. Monsieur Jouvin is the injured party. He chooses the weapons and he chooses swords. Wait! It would be little less than murder to pit this man against a swordsman like you. Mademoiselle Dupre flatters me. But I've made my choice, monsieur. Monsieur, your soul beat. Allez, monsieur. Man. Ruben is making a fool of him. Apologize, monsieur. Quickly. As far as I'm concerned, you're still a slave thief. Juvin, 
You won this fight, fair and square. But don't press your luck. Be careful, monsieur. This American has a reputation with a knife. Get out. This way, monsieur. Through the back door. And don't scuff your feet on the floors. This way, monsieur. Mr. Bowie. You forgot these. Yeah, thank you. I am Madeleine Dupre. You are a courageous man, Monsieur Bowie, but you made one mistake tonight. You insulted Pierre Jouvin and gave him the choice of weapons. Next time, I suggest that you let Monsieur Jouvin insult you. He will be at the Club des Exiles tomorrow night. Perhaps if you disguised yourself as a gentleman, they might let you in. Give me a bottle of ale, Peg. Allow me to drink to your continued good health, Mr. Boy. Hello. I'm glad I didn't have to write your obituary. You met Jouvin. Mm. Jouvin's adversaries don't raise usually walk away. I raise you 20. I go. Peg, is this man staying here? Yes, sir. I got your beat, mister. Just a minute. Give him back his money. Who said so? I said give him back his money. Look, you know a man's too drunk to know what he's doing. Come on, you've played enough tonight, mister. You need any help, Mr. Bowie? You're going up to bed. Jim Bowie? Come on, up to get. Well, I don't want to quit. You better have it for the night, mister. Come on. You men use real good judgment. I'll take you to your room. No. Here we are. Oh. Thank you. Friend of yours? Him? I never saw him before. You mean uh, you pulled him out of the card game for no reason at all? The man was drunk. He was being fleeced. As it happened, the man was Sam Houston. Drunk or sober, he's quite capable of taking care of himself. Sam Houston? That's right. <laughs> now for the story you promised me about the famous Bowie knife. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I didn't think that I'd ever put Governor Sam Houston to bed. <laughs> Evening, Peg. Your carriage is waiting for you, Mr. Bowie. Thanks. Bowie? Did I hear somebody say Bowie? So you're a Jim Bowie. What right you got pulling me out of a card game when I'm holding a club flush? You were holding a whiskey flush, sir, and you were being cheated. <laughs> you're right, friend, you're right. And Sam Houston thanks you. Glad to be a service, Governor. Oh, no, no, not Governor, just Sam Houston. Businessman, trader, adventurer like yourself. Peg, Peg, a bottle of Monongahela. So you're a Jim Bowie. Come on, sit down. You know, you've made quite a reputation for yourself. I've been wanting to catch up with you for a long time. Sam Houston like to know more about you. Did you, uh, did you ever hear of a place called Texas? Of course. My brother Reason and I have been thinking of going out there and buying up some land. Well, here's to Texas. You ought to see it, friend. Why, its virgin soil lies untouched by the plow. And its vast prairies teem with buffalo. And riches. Riches beyond a man's wildest dreams. When can you leave, boy? Whoa, not so fast, Mr. Houston. <laughs> I was just thinking of going there. I'm not leaving right now. Why not? I have my plantation in Opelousa to look after, and I... Why in Texas you'll have so much land will make that plantation of yours look like a... like a sharecropper's half acre? Now, enough of this talk. When can you leave? 
I'm sorry, Mr. Houston. I can't even talk about it right now. A friend of mine's in trouble. Trouble? A Negro named Joseph. He was picked up by Lafitte slave stealers. And he'll be sold at auction unless I can free him in time. Ah, oh, bother with this fellow. You and me still got a lot of talking and drinking to do. You'll have to excuse me, sir. I gave this man his freedom. He saved my life once. I can't turn my back on him now. You know something, Bowie? The more you talk, the more Sam Houston wants you to go to Texas with him. Now then, you got any plan of action to free this friend of yours, Joseph? I've located the man who holds him. May take a little persuading. Well, my knife hand might not be as skilled as yours, but it's yours for what it's worth. Let's go, Mr. Houston. <laughs> Sur le rouge, 2300. Houston's the name, Sam Houston, of Tennessee, Texas, and the Cherokee Nation. This is my friend here, Jim Bowen. Sergeant. I'm only the manager. Permit me to welcome you to the Club des Exilés. You honor us with your presence, gentlemen. Make yourself at home. See what he called it? Gentlemen, disguise is perfect. There's my man at the roulette table. I'll sit here. Chair's always a handy way. Give me some blues, please. Henri? Henri! Let's see your bed, gentlemen, please. Wait. Is your Jean call? Yes, I called already. I was under the impression this was a gentleman's club. Oh, I'm again lost, Monsieur Jouvin. He means me, Henri. Mr. Jouvin doesn't think that I belong here. In plain words, Mr. Jouvin doesn't think that I'm a gentleman. Isn't that right, sir? Is there any doubt about it, Monsieur? I couldn't say, Mr. Jouvin. I don't rightly know what it takes to be a gentleman in these parts. Monsieur Bouillet. It would be best, perhaps, if you left. Well, I wonder you. First you welcome me here, then you ask me to leave. You seem to be having a little trouble riding the mule at both ends. Don't ask him to leave, Henri. Throw him out. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Henri. Let me say what I came here to say. Then I'll leave him on accord. I would just like to point out to all you distinguished gentlemen that you can't tell a man by the cut of his coat Take uh, Mr. Jouvin here, for example. He has the fine clothes, the fine speech, the fine manners of a gentleman. But that's where it ends. Because Mr. Jouvin, your distinguished fellow club member, is a dirty, slave-stealing thief. He's a harling of the pirate Lafitte. Thank you, Jouvin. Monsieur Chauvin, Monsieur Bouy, please, gentlemen, please, remember where you are, remember what you are. I don't stop the game going. Uh, gentlemen, please place your bets. Uh, one minute. According to your code of the duello, as I was struck, I'm entitled to choice of weapon. That's correct, sir. And I claim the honor of being the second to Monsieur Chauvin. Allow me the honor to introduce my second, Mr. Sam Houston of Tennessee and Texas. We are indeed honored, sir. Weapons, time and place, Monsieur? Bowie knives. Here and now. It's your choice, monsieur. All right, gentlemen, step back and give him fighting room. Oh, please, not in here, sir. Oh, no, 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 the equipment. Please, up here. Here, here's the wonderful lounge. It's very nice indeed. Come up here, sir. Look, it's a special room. That looks all right. The only condition I'd like to make is that Mr. Jouvin and I are locked in that room alone. Barbaric. Oh, come, monsieur. Must we quibble over the way my friend chooses to die? Now, let's get on with it. Of course, sir. If you'd care to admit that you're a thief and return Joseph to me, I'd be very happy to call off the duel. Come, monsieur. Let's get this over with at once. You gentlemen came here to gamble. Anybody like to make a little bet? Five hundred dollars on Jovin. The gentleman has a bet. Tables and chairs. Shouldn't that be removed? No, oh, a few hazards will make the fight more exciting. 
particularly when the room's dark. Dark. That's right, Juvin. You taught me a few tricks with the rapier. Maybe I can teach you a few tricks with a knife. That's something for me to remember, Juvin. Never turn my back on you. No, no. Don't hold a knife like that. Hold it like this. That's right. That's good, Juvin. That's right. Try again. Come on. I'd be willing to lay a few odds. Say, uh, five to three. Any takers? Getting shorter, gentlemen. There's something wrong in there. Maybe they're both dead. In that case, naturally, all bets are off. It's Pierre! It's one! Tell him, Juvan. Go on, tell him. Everything he said is true. Louder. I deal in stolen slaves. Sit down over there. Go on, move. Henri, notify the police. Wait, monsieur. Write an order for Joseph's release. Five hundred dollars from the gentleman. And while you're about it, write a release for every stolen slave in the barracoon. Let's have a look at your back. Five. Lucky for you, there aren't any more. How about the rest of these men? What's going to happen to them? They will be returned to their rightful owners. Good night, gentlemen. I'll leave his own feet. <laughs> this will make a better story than the one about your famous knife, Mr. Boyd. Mr. Boyd. Hello. Hello. I see you took my advice. Uh, yes, and it uh, worked very well. Thank you. Thank you. You did us both a very great service. That is right, my dear. Jovin was becoming difficult. And now, as for you, I will give you just 24 hours to join me or get out of New Orleans. And uh, who are you, sir, to give me such an order? Lafitte is my name. Jean Lafitte. Well, my friend, he didn't give you much choice, did he? Either you come to Texas with me, or you stay here and join him. Well, that might not be such a bad idea. <laughs> I think maybe you better come to Texas. You'll be safer with me. Much safer. <laughs> and here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello, everyone. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we'll be with us next week for another exciting adventure in the life of Jim Boy. Adventure in man. Adventure in man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He roamed the wilderness.
wilderness found a phrase from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold, adventuring man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for rights with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man.